What's going on guys? Sean here, coming at y'all with a quick little video. Uh, just woke up this morning, was watching some content from yesterday, reading up on some Twitter. Um, you know, I, I personally like to watch a lot of Eagles content creators. I watch Philly 500 pretty much every day. I watch Philly Mike pretty much every day. Um, I watch Run It Back Philly, uh, DJ Eastwood. Um, I, I watch no name guys like uh, you know like me you know what I mean guys that, that have no following uh, Nikki Steeles you know um, I, I was following Weapon X for a while until he started beefing with Philly Mike I don't really dig that Philly Mike's you know kind of like that's my, one of my top boots he's the guy that kind of made me interested you know in starting YouTube and talking about stuff like this made me realize you know just just do it don't even hesitate on it so I used to watch Weapon X a little bit. I might fall back into him because I know they squash their shit, but I watch Lord Brunson. The point of all this is, you know, everybody's got different tastes. Um, everybody's looking at things from different angles, and that's the beauty of YouTube. That's the beauty of, of, of following the Eagles on Twitter and on YouTube because you can follow beat writers and get one angle. All the beat writers have the same angle. They have to be PC. They have to be on the side of the, the, the organization, yada, yada. They can't be raw like fans can. They can't just say what they feel in the moment because, yeah, it affects them a little bit more. You know, we as the fans would probably tear them apart. But with YouTubers and, and, and us that, you know, are out here doing what we're doing, it's just different. I feel like we reach people in a different way, uh, you know, per person. Everybody does it in a different way, you know, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um... So, it made me think of something with this D-line that really nobody's talking about. Um, so, if you're new here, obviously, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, comment down below, let me know what you think about what I'm going to talk to you guys about today, you know, with this D-line rotation, and, you know, we got a, we got a lot of players there, you know, so uh, just go ahead and do that for me if you would. I appreciate you guys very much, as always, you know, have a great day. Thank you so much. I love y'all. But... Enough of that. Um, the Eagles D-line. Right now, we realistically have like 12, 14, 15, maybe 16 guys from linebacker to, to defensive end to D-tackle that can get it done. I mean, we've got like five defensive tackles on this roster right now that can get it done. Uh, we have a ton of pass rushers. I mean, we got young guys making the old guys look like they're standing still. All right? You know, things that we as a team haven't had in a long time. But the question remains, how are we going to use them? You know, and see, that's kind of the question that I've been asking myself. And, you know, as I said before, I'm watching these YouTubers. And I feel like a lot of people think that, you know, in a 4-3 front, which, I'll give them this, in a 4-3 front, you're going to see a lot of Jalen Carter, or uh, Jordan Davis and Fletcher Cox. I don't think that's right. I think when you see the Eagles line up in their nickel and 4-3 package, uh, with two defensive tackles instead of three, <coughs> um, I think you're going to see Jalen Carter. I, I think it's a no-brainer. Jalen Carter is good against the run and a pass rusher. I love Jordan Davis. I love the pick as a nose tackle, as a guy just covering the middle of the field, or the middle of the lines, making sure nobody runs the ball. I love it. In three, four packages, I think Jalen uh, Jordan Davis starts every down because the only reason we're going to do three, four is to allow Hassan Reddick to get a little further outside and for Jordan Davis to be on the field. You know, I see people talking like Jordan Davis is going to be in on every snap. Did you guys not watch the Eagles last year? Now, I understand last year, different coach, uh, different setup. But they knew what Jordan Davis was. They weren't purposefully putting him out there on, you know, third and longs and, and you know, pass rushing situation. I mean, no. You've got guys that do different things well on this D-line. It would be stupid not to put them in situations where they can be successful. So, you know, to all the people that think Jordan Davis is just going to start, yeah, he might start the first snap of the year because nine times out of ten, the first play of the year is a run play from the other team. You know, just knock the jitters off, call a run play, get it done, second down rolls around, let's get this game started. That's how it goes. So, you know, I, I'm not so sure that Jordan Davis plays the role that everybody else does. 
I'm also not convinced that because a player got in better shape, that that suddenly means that they know how to fin use finesse moves and power pass rush moves, um, how to chain pass rushing moves together. That doesn't change anything about his motor. That just tells me he's been working hard all summer, which is good. But at the same time, you know, is he working too hard? Is he doing too much? Is he taking away too much weight that made him valuable? Is he now just another fit D tackle? You know, it, there's a lot to worry about. I put out a video, uh, a short, saying, oh, this player is shredded and it got a ton of views. But like, the point remains, every year a player gets shredded. Someone on, on a team, or there's probably someone on every team, gets shredded, everybody falls for it, oh, he's so badass, he's faster, he's stronger, he's this, he's that, you don't know, you just don't know, so until camp really starts, you know, showing us what people are doing, until the preseason games, you know, we don't know, we don't know, and, you know, to anybody out there watching this, you know, that watches another YouTuber talk about uh, their sources and stuff like that, just don't even listen to that. I'm sorry. If if you were somebody who had sources in the building, if you were getting real intel from people within the building, you wouldn't be a YouTuber. You'd be calling up NBC Philly or something like that. You'd be trying papers. If you have a legitimate source in the NFL or in an NFL locker room and you use it to get on YouTube and not help grow your channel at all or, you know what I mean? Like, then you don't have a source. You just say that, and uh, it's lame. I just, I, you know, yeah, that's for someone specific, but it's lame, all right? And to all of you guys watching these people, if they had a source, they wouldn't be on YouTube. There'd be an article writ uh, wrote and written, whatever, on Twitter about it, Bleacher Report, uh, NFL.com, you know what I mean? Like, just saying. And if you do have a source in the building, and he's only telling you things that aren't helping you, well, then he's just fucking with you. <laughs> so, either way, it's pretty dumb. But, guys, uh, what do you think's going to happen on the D-line? Because, you know, Derek Barnett also just restructured. This was another part of what I wanted to talk about. I got on a little tangent there. No, yeah, sorry about that. <clears throat> Derek Barnett just restructured. And there's still people saying that he's going to be traded. Do you not understand Derek Barnett is not going anywhere? That is why, it, you know what, that just completely adds into to my Jordan Davis point about why he's not going to start on this D-line. You know who's going to start next to him when they're in three, four fronts? It's going to be Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, um, you know, Derek Barnett, uh, and whoever else makes the roster at the DN, you know, at the DN position. You know, and then you're going to have linebackers, Hassan Reddick, you're going to have Nolan Smith, uh, Patrick Johnson, I think, was one of them. You're going to have those linebackers, the outside linebackers, rolling off the outside. And then when you have turbo packages like nickel and whatever, <clears throat> you run Hassan, Sweat, Carter, and Fletch. That's your best pass rushing group right now as far as anybody's concerned. You know, I don't understand why it doesn't make sense to people. You're not lining up Fletch, Jordan Davis, and Jalen Carter next to each other for a ton of snaps a game. You might do it once or twice for pictures and for looks, you just to say you did, but it's it's not going to be something you do all game long. You know, you're not going to just stay in 3-4, you're not just going to run a five-man front the entire game. It just doesn't work like that. So, tell me what you guys think. Is there any validity whatsoever to what I'm saying? Am I just talking out of my ass? Do you guys think uh, Jordan Davis is really going to be that good this year? I mean, do you think he's just going to make me shove everything I just said right back down my throat. I mean, I hope he does. Absolutely. I hope everybody eats on this team. It is not a slight at anybody. I do not dislike anybody. I do not want beef with anybody. I hope we all succeed, okay? But, realistically, we all don't, okay? Tell me what you guys think. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Sorry that I rambled to all the Philly contenders out there. Keep doing what you do. I love you guys. All right? Peace.